Hi guys, I hope you're doing good. Um, today we have to talk about something really important, which is intuition and our divine connectivity. So today in my Facebook group, Intuitive Healing with Ali Duzet, I got a very wonderful, heartfelt question about intuition. <clears throat> and but but the question that she asked is something that a lot of people ask. Like I bet that many of you guys watching this have the same question, which is, um, what about all those times that we prayed for stuff and it didn't happen? And we we thought we were going in with faith and trusting and the stuff we asked for didn't happen. And what about all the times that we've asked for answers and didn't get them? Or what about all the times that we asked for answers and got inaccurate answers and answers that turned out to not be true? Um, what about the times that we've asked for answers and didn't feel anything at all? What about all of those times? And <clears throat> I, I have a lot to say about this topic, and I actually wrote a book about it, which is this book, Mastering Your Intuition, How to Get Answers from God and Your Soul. So I'm going to strongly recommend that. Um, I'm going to recommend that book to you. But um, but I wanted to talk about it right now because we're, we're almost halfway through this eclipse portal tomorrow, and Monday is going to be this halfway point. We're right here next to Easter, um, and this is just a really great time to be thinking about how how we do connect with God and how how it works and how we can be better at it because even even those of us that do feel like pretty easily connected we can still stand to do better like I feel like I can stand to do better we can all stand to do better let me grab my cord before my computer dies okay um okay so one one of the premises of my book, Mastering Your Intuition, is that we experience intuition and messages from God through the medium of our physical body. So let's take it a step back because I think that to some people this is a little bit shocking, but it should not be very shocking because every thought that you think has has mass, okay? What we're experiencing is chemical reactions in our brains using neurons, using chemicals that are made from the foods we ingest, right? All of the all of the stimuli that we pick up on is picked up on by our nervous system and our nervous system is what takes what is outside of us, translates it into information and sends it up to the brain where physical neurons can form actual real life connections. And you know, when you feel the spirit, when you feel inspired, when you get a new idea, I know it sounds all like hoofy woofy and like ethereal and mysterious, but it's not, okay? We're talking about chemical reactions. That is the reality of it. We're dealing with a chemical structure that is being created in the moment that we're feeling inspired, okay? So how do we feel inspired? I mean, like to me, when it comes to issues of intuition, the number one thing that I think of is the physical body. Is your physical body in the proper condition where it actually is capable of taking that external stimuli and translating it into the chemical signals that your brain is going to pick up on and, and understand and create the correct chemicals to, to have the reactions that you need to have what you recognize as a thought. Does this make any sense? Um, I want you to think about the times that you've, you've known that you were being watched. You know that feeling when you're like, somebody is watching me. Even if they're standing way far behind you, you get that feeling and you're like, someone's watching, you know, it's a real thing. Our nervous systems are more powerful than we comprehend. And I think that to some extent they do, I mean, they obviously don't extend physically outside of the, outside of the physical body, but, um, let's pause this little thought for a second and talk for a moment about quantum mechanics and, and electron function, because if you've ever, ever heard of spooky action at a distance, which is what Einstein called quantum entanglement, this is where electrons can exist at two places at the same time, okay? And that is just true. And I think that that is really what's happening is that you yourself have this number of electrons that's associated with you and your body and your spirit, okay? Everything that is you, it has your little label on it. For me, it's going to say, Allie, Allie Duzette. And all of my all of my electrons that are associated with every cell and organ in my whole body, every atom that belongs to me has electrons that also kind of belong to me. And when somebody else is entangling with any of my electrons, my nervous system 
has to be the one that picks up on this on a physical body level, okay? Your, your electrons may pick up on it whether or not your nervous system does because there's still a quantum entanglement happening. Does this make sense? But whether or not you recognize it is going to be a nervous system issue. So let's pause for a second. And I know we're talking about complicated stuff, but I hope I can make it simple enough to understand. But you know that feeling when you're being watched. Um, now I want you to imagine that somebody's watching you and you're throwing up. Okay. Are you going to pay? Are you going to notice that the feeling that somebody's watching you? Like, no, you're busy throwing up. Okay. Um, what if you have chronic pain? What if you have, um, you know, kids yelling at you, you know, we, we get in all these different stimuli and they can distract us from these different inputs. And so when we're trying to become more sensitive to the different kind of inputs that our nervous systems can pick up on, we have to be aware of what is our nervous system already handling? We've got to start systematically clearing out the backlog of what our nervous system is having to deal with on a daily basis so that we can be more sensitive to to the other kinds of information in our environment that our nervous system is trying to pick up on. Okay, so, so this is my understanding of how it works. We are all walking through basically this soup of atoms, okay, right? All the air is full of atoms. And the, these atoms are made of protons and neutrons and electrons and and a whole bunch of other stuff, tons of other stuff, right? And we're going to talk about CERN later, guys, but not probably today, but on a different day. So, um, uh-oh. Okay, so here we go. My, oh my gosh, my computer is being a weirdo. Okay. Um, but but CERN is, is going to be doing a big experiment during the solar eclipse, specifically to see if it can isolate more subatomic particles and reenact a big bang kind of situation. Oh my gosh, my that's my top viewed video on this channel is about CERN from the last time they were up to no good. So you can go check that out for an update on last time, and we'll talk about it more later. Um, but the point is that subatomic particles is what we're we're living in. Okay, you're breathing air, but what you're really doing is interacting with this field of subatomic particles and atoms, all this stuff around us, right? And your nervous system and your energy field are designed to work together and and give you this information. You know, you notice when you're when you're feeling watched. Um but we but we notice a whole lot of things, you know, um, have you ever just been walking around and you like suddenly have a feeling that you need to stop or like that warning kind of feeling? Um, our our bodies are picking up on a whole lot of information and it's all being filtered through our nervous system, all of your nerves and you have tons of nerves. You have more nerves than you can probably imagine. They're running all the way through you. Just yesterday, I took my son in for an eye exam and they did the eyeball picture, you know, and, and I had not realized, you know, we have like the optic nerve, but like you, 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 we could see the, the optic nerve nerves. And I was like, oh my gosh, this is like so much more complicated than I thought. And I even knew that and the nervous system's like really complicated, but we're dealing with extremely tiny, 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 tiny little tubes. Okay. So this is something that we have to understand is that our spiritual connectivity, I, I personally think that how spiritually connected we feel is very, very dependent on the health of those tiny, tiny tubes that are our nervous system, okay? So if you're inflamed, somebody like punches you and you, you get a big bruise and a bunch of inflammation, those nerves are going to be compromised, the nerves in your arm. But uh, you need a certain amount of nerves that are functioning in order to be able to pick up on spiritual information that is coming from outside of your physical body, trying to enter the inside of your physical body. Your nervous system is the guy picking it up and transporting that data into your physical body. So when people are struggling to feel answers, this is one of the first things that I talk about is um, we got to deal with the physical body. What do we have to do? We got to reduce inflammation. We've got to take more electrolytes. I just put out a reel about electrolytes where um because they're called electrolytes because they are literally electrical conductors. Okay. And that's why you got to be super hydrated. You got to stay on top of your hydration. You can't drink soda pop all day long. Like, oh my gosh, if you're drinking a ton of soda and expecting to get a lot of high quality divine revelation, like that's ridiculous. 
it's just silly. Your body needs hydration from actual water in order to function. Soda pop is a diuretic. It's going to dehydrate you. Like you have to replenish your body's fluids. And it's not just because of whatever, like on a spiritual level, your body needs that water to act as a conductor of electricity so that the, this spiritual information can be picked up by your nerves and actually make it all the way to your brain. And, um, man, uh, I don't know uh, when, when we want to be more spiritual, we got to look at the physical body. That is my opinion. We got to start stretching and taking care of our muscles and building that muscle fiber. Okay. Yoga is so great because it's going to stretch out your nervous system as well and strengthen your nerves. This is one reason why a lot of people get into yoga and leave religion because they start feeling the Holy spirit more doing yoga than they do at church, which is a really, really common phenomenon. And I think that's made a lot of churchgoers say, oh, never do yoga. But I, what I think is maybe churchgoers should all do yoga be, and, but you know, can we have a world where we can both stretch our bodies and strengthen our nervous systems and, um, you know, have an easier time of feeling the spirit in a church setting, um, when maybe that's not the easiest place for some people to feel connected. Um, we got to stretch our bodies. We got to strengthen our nerves. We got to drink enough water. We got to take our electrolytes that are going to act as an electrical conductor. One thing to know about inflammation is that inflammation, it, it always, it always messes with your electrical voltage. Every single one of your cells runs on electricity. They all run on electricity. You are electronic. Okay. You are a robot. Do you get it? I mean, we're meat robots. Okay. We are robots of flesh. We are powered by our spirits, and I really think that our spirits are electric. I think that what runs us is electricity, our own electrons. That's what I really think. That's what I really think probably spirits are, is a bunch of electrons. And I think that when we die, our electrons bink, leave out. And then we have nothing to electrically animate our bodies left, uh, unless they, you know, what, electrocute us back to life, okay? Um but I think it's our electron signature that really is us. That's just my, that's just my guess. I don't know. I'm not going to like, you know, <laughs> die on that hill, but, but I, I think that might be true, you know? So what we've got to do is strengthen our ability to, to have high energy. And when you talk about high energy, um, have you ever seen that reel where it's like more passion, more passion, more energy, more energy? If you haven't, you should go see, just look up more passion, more passion, more energy, more energy in the internet and probably something hilarious will come up. I love those. <laughs> but um, but energy is both, it's, you know, we have energy like electricity, like that's running the light bulbs and we have energy like my grandpa always called me the energizer bunny because I'm just like, go, go, go. We're just going to go, go, go. Um, but I, I do think that to a large extent, energy, energeticness, I don't know, the, I, I just think that there is some kind of a connection between our, our energy and the energy of spirit. I hope that makes any sense. I think it's, I think it's easier to be inspired when you have more energy and the way to get more energy is to increase your electrical voltage on a cellular level. And the way to do that is going to be all those things, stretching, um, hydration, electrolytes, but also vitamins and minerals. If you're not taking a multivitamin every day, come on, it's time, you know, take your vitamins. Now, I'm not talking those Flintstone vitamins, even though they are delicious. Um, I right now take, um, oh my gosh, I'm not going to remember it right here. I'll, I'll find it later if you, if you guys super care about my vitamins. Um, but I take a whole food-based vitamin um, that you just take every day because you need to take your vitamins every day. And we need to be taking our minerals, right? Um, I love fulvic minerals as a source of trace minerals, but we need to take both our macro minerals. It's going to be things like magnesium. Um, these, let's see, magnesium on my brain would copper count as a macro mineral i'm not but um and then we take our trace minerals that it, that is going to be things like if you've seen concentrates around or yeah i like fulvic minerals we we have to make sure that we're getting enough minerals and in a modern american diet we don't 
And this, this always makes me feel absolutely sick to my stomach. The people that I know, I'm sorry if this is you. I'm sorry. I love you so much. My degree is in soil science, like soil chemistry. And I can tell you that for the past 50 years, all we've done is strip our soils. Have you ever thrown away food into the trash can? Guess what? That food is never getting back into the soil. It's never coming back into the ecosystem. We have been throwing away nutrients that are never coming back into circulation, okay? The food that you put into a garbage bag, a plastic garbage bag, it does not rot. It turns into poisonous methane, okay? We're not we're not getting those nutrients back. And what we have done is completely destroyed the nutrient signature of all of our soils. And so so the thing that I hate is I had this dear friend who I love so much. I haven't heard from them in like years. I'm sure they don't follow me. If you do, I still love you. I love you so much. But they they told me, okay, the one other person in their family cut off their finger. And I was like, you have to take vitamin C. You have to take more vitamin C than you have ever, ever dreamed of. Like take the vitamin C. Vitamin C heals cell walls. You have to do it. And it also helps with your conduction. It helps heal your electrical signature. And that is so important, especially if you're dealing with phantom pain, like, come on, take your vitamin C. They literally, they meant this. They were like, we don't do that. We eat real food. We're going to eat extra strawberries. They honest to God thought that eating strawberries was going to give them enough vitamin C to heal a cut off finger. Can you believe that? I was floored. I, I was just like, oh, okay, guys, there is not enough nutrients in our natural food, including our organic food. It's not nutritious. Like, it's okay, but it is not going to do the trick. If you're thinking you're getting enough nutrients from your organic food, I'm here to tell you that as a soil scientist, that is probably really false. And please go just buy some vitamins, please. Okay, get your vitamins, get your minerals. How can you expect to have a really successful relationship with God through the medium of your physical body? If your body is in terrible condition, if your body doesn't have the ingredients that it needs for your nerves to actually take this data and actually bring it up to your brain and for your brain to actually create the neural pathways, which again, they have mass, like these are real things, okay? These are not just little floofy ideas. The thoughts that you have are, are real chemical reactions that are really happening. It's real. It's all just real. This is chemistry, guys. And we got to make sure we're per, we're giving ourselves the ingredients that we need to have the chemistry that is necessary for revelation. Okay. That's, that's what I want to say about that. Okay. So I talk about that a lot in Mastering Your Intuition. And I talk about all sorts of other interesting things. And that book has... Um, you know, 10 bazillion journaling prompts and tapping scripts and other stuff to help you kind of figure out what's going on. So if you have really struggled with um, with, with intuition, then I'm going to recommend that book. But okay, there's another part of the story. Let's go ahead and uh, share the screen. Sure. This is Kate Middleton's birth chart. And I'm I'm bringing it up because I just wanted us to take a look at a variety of charts today. Um. Okay, so every time that somebody is born, you take your first breath, and the moment that you take your first breath, that's when the chart is generated, and what happens in the chart, it kind of shows the map of how your whole life is, okay? And so on a scriptural level, I'm just going to give a little quick shout out to Psalms 19, 1 through 4, that talks about how the words of the stars are gone out through all the earth, and that is what astrology is, astro stars, logos, the word. It is reading the words of the stars. And the Bible strictly says that there are, the stars have words, like they, they utter speech and their speech goes out to the ends of the earth. And every single person has their own unique thing that the stars spoke about them. Okay. And if you look at the words that they spoke, that's this kind of chart. And so the thing that I want to talk about in the chart is this, this is Pisces, this, uh, this, it's two fish swimming in opposite directions. So Pisces and the 12th house and Neptune, this that's uh, this trident guy like Poseidon. These are the guys in charge of your intuition plus also your moon, okay? And so whatever's going on in your chart is going to really impact how you personally 
experience intuition. I don't think everybody needs to run out and get a star chart reading to figure out how they deal with intuition. You are qualified to just look at your life and notice how you best interpret divine signals. But looking at a chart can be helpful if you are confused about how you experience intuition. So this is Kate Middleton. She's got nothing in Pisces at all. She has, um, and she's got nothing in the 12th house. So that's this spot right here, right next to this arrow, right above it. This is the 12th house and it's the, it goes along with Pisces and Neptune. And when you have nothing in the 12th house, nothing in Pisces, it doesn't, that doesn't mean anything's wrong with you. It means that you have like kind of undiluted 12th house and Pisces energy. That's very pure. Um, it just is what it is without all sorts of other other stuff coming in and mingling energies in that zone. But, uh, okay, her Neptune here is in Sagittarius, which is going to tell me that one way that she's going to experience intuition is going to be through exploration. She's going to need to try some new things in order to feel like she's getting divine information. Down here, she's got the moon in Cancer, which is... A more intuitive space the moon deals with your inner knowingness and cancer the moon rules cancer and so it's also dealing with our inner knowingness so she probably has um an okay sense of intuition for her personally though her her son is in capricorn which is not into intuition and so so she might have a little bit of a struggle because her head will tell her to be super logical and her heart will tell her but you gotta you know, you got to feel the feelings. You got to feel what it feels like. And that will be a little bit of a back and forth for her. Now, I want to clarify, this doesn't mean Capricorns are not intuitive. You can have Capricorn, you can have plenty of Capricorn in your chart and be very intuitive. But it is just to say that Capricorn's default settings are a little bit more on the logic end. They want more proof. And Cancer settings are more, they're just kind of less that way. They they don't need as much proof before they will, um, before they will feel feel their feelings. I I hope that makes any sense. I'm oversimplifying extremely complex topics here. I just want to be clear, please. I know I'm t talking to a whole bunch of newbies that don't know very much about this, but like, this is a way oversimplification. But let's. I, I'm going to start a new chart really quick. This is somebody that I know um, that I have permission to use her chart. Let me remember her birthday. That's not it. Okay. 625 PM in Montgomery Village, Maryland. Okay. You're going to see that her chart is really different. Okay. So this is a really, really interesting chart. This person was born on the new moon in Virgo. There's her sun and her moon in Virgo, which is going to give you a really logic-oriented brain. When Lots of stuff in Virgo, you really want everything to make sense. And it's really not... Um, Virgo does not love intuition as a general thing. It's Virgos can feel... I'm a Virgo, and I'm very intuitive, um, which maybe I'll pull up my own chart to show you some, some insights about that. But Virgo's default settings are not really very intuitive now this here we have pisces and here we have neptune in pisces which normally neptune in pisces would make a person more more spiritually connected and and i think it does this here as well but look it's pretty close to this green key here which is chiron we're gonna double check it let's see where is that green key it is conjunct Neptune, according to my software. So close enough that these two are going to kind of meld energies. And Chiron deals with your deepest soul wound. And these are both in retrograde for this person. So what we're looking at here is a person who, on the one hand, is kind of super intuitive because she's got Neptune in Pisces in the first house of her physical body. But it's right next to her deepest soul wound in retrograde. And retrogrades make you double think, rethink, reevaluate, go back over things. This is someone who has a lot of potential for intuition, but she's going to constantly second guess all of her intuition. She's going to tell herself a story that she's not intuitive. 
probably when she gets intuition, she's going to say, oh no, that wasn't it. Or she's going to tell herself a story. Well, God, t- God tells other people that way, but he wouldn't talk to me that way. And when God does speak to her, she'll be a person who says, well, but I probably made it up. And I say this, I know this person very well. <laughs> and uh, and that is very true for her. And ever since she has been a very tiny person, she has said that she can't feel the Holy Spirit. She has said, I just, I just don't know if I can feel God. I just don't know. And when I look at her chart, I'm like, okay, this is the chart of somebody who's going to feel a lot of wounds around her spiritual connectivity, who's going to have a lot of doubt around it. And this right here, there's no, there's no numbers around this Pisces. Do you see how all these guys have numbers? This has no numbers. It's because it's trapped in this little window here in the first house. And whenever you have a trapped energy like that, it can just feel very frustrated all the time. I have an interception myself and And that zone of my chart always is so frustrating. I just feel frustrated about it all the time. That's just how it is. And so for this person, she actually is very intuitive, but she's not going to feel intuitive. And she's going to, she's going to have this life lesson where she's going to have to learn how to experience her intuition, um, despite her own doubts. She has a, a path to mastery where she's being called to learn to master her own doubt to master her own fears that she is not intuitive and learn what it feels like in her physical body to know that she is intuitive. She's going to have to work harder at it than some other people. And it is what it is, um, but that's okay. Now, one thing I want to mention here is this is Aquarius. And whenever you have an intercepted sign like this, this Pisces with no numbers, you always look at the one immediately to the, you know, counterclockwise of it okay so that's going to be it's always going to be aquarius on on pisces pisces intercepted is always going to have aquarius on the other side and this is like the door in to your intuition so if you are feeling like you are not intuitive my big lesson from the stars for people that that probably have um maybe some tougher combinations in pisces where their default settings are just not as intuitive as other people's default settings if that is you then your answer is to come through Aquarius energies. So what the heck is an Aquarius energy? Aquarius energy is deeply humanitarian. It just wants to do the right thing. It just wants to do good for as many people as possible. That is my greatest advice for people who don't feel like they are being led by intuition. Uh, I I would just invite you to consider making your new thought process, uh, doing whatever you want, but always making sure that it's going to bless the most amount of people, including yourself as a really important person in that calculation. Okay. We're not going to just self-sacrifice all the day without ever caring um, about our own needs. That is a recipe for disaster. We're going to count ourselves as part of the people that we're doing our, our mental math on. But Aquarius just goes out there and does whatever it wants. It thinks outside the box. It is the most unique sign of the whole chart it's the one that's so far out of the box it actually lost the box it's like not sure that there ever even was a box and everyone else is like in the box they're like hello Aquarius why aren't you in this box (laughs) which is it can be a hard life for Aquarians because a lot of times people with a lot of Aquarius can feel kind of misunderstood because they're trying their best to help other people and all these other people are like what are you doing buddy what's what is this you know and Aquarius hates to be controlled it does not want to be told what to do Um, If you are feeling like you're having trouble being led by God, the message I've taken away from years and years of studying hundreds of charts is that the real answer is that might be your default settings. Your default settings might be that it's a little bit harder for you and it's okay. What you're going to do is go through Aquarius. You're going to sit there and say, what do I want to do? What do I want to do that maybe doesn't even make sense? And If I'm going to do that thing that doesn't make sense, is it going to bless other people? Is it going to make other people's lives better? And if it, if it is, if it does, then the answer is yes. You just do it. That is your intuition. That is your intuition. If you struggle feeling like God is telling you yes or no, if you feel like you pray and you don't get answers, this is my message to you. Maybe your special mission here is to experience the Aquarius side of intuition, which is you go out there, you decide what you're going to do. and you just make sure that it's going to bless people. You know, you you just go into it with your mental math saying, I want to help people. I want to bless myself and bless everybody around me. 
And I think that the best way I'm going to do that is this. And then you just do it. And you don't second guess yourself. I'll tell you my personal prayer. Every time I do, every time I use that as my method of intuition, I always just say, God, just stop me if I'm wrong. And God has always stopped me if I was wrong. And many times, actually, most of the times, God does not stop me. And I just say, okay, I guess I was right. Yes. And I think that that is a big life lesson for a lot of us to learn, um, is to just learn how to trust ourselves, learn what it feels like to to believe that the answer that you are making up for yourself is good enough. One thing that I really struggle with is when people feel when people say, well, I think I got an answer, but I think I made it up. Yes, you did make it up. It's called chemistry. That's how this works. Your neurons literally made up the answer that you got. Like your own chemicals made a chemical reaction that gave you your intuition or your inspiration Yes, if it feels made up, then you probably did it right. <laughs> that's just, uh, that's the only way that it can be. I saw a reel the other day where this um this guy was like, yeah, he was like, when you when you just want a clear answer from God, and he's sitting there like, God, will you please, will you please just tell me yes or no if I should do this thing? And you hear like God, it's like yes. And he's like, oh, well, oh, okay, okay, God. Oh man, but what if, what if that wasn't you? What if that was really me? What if I made that up? What if, you know, what if that wasn't you? And then you just see like God being like, oh my gosh, I told him yes. He's just second guessing himself. What is he doing? I think sometimes we just have to run, run with it and just go for it. I'll tell you a lot of my prayers have been very annoying lately because I pray them. <laughs> I'm like, okay, God, what should I do? And I literally hear that divine voice being like, well, what do you think you should do? Like, what do you want to do? And I'm like, no, I don't, I don't want to do that. I don't want to choose what I want to do. I want you to choose what I want to do. Come on, God, just tell me what I want to do. And, uh, and actually that's like how this, uh, this exact video came about. I was sitting there praying like, okay, God, what, what should I make my video about for tomorrow? Getting a bunch of nothing. I got a bunch of nothing. And I said, okay, well, then maybe I'll just pick my own topic. And I felt like, yeah, okay, I'll just pick my own topic. And this is the topic I picked. So if you feel like I intuitively selected this, just know that I prayed about this and got no answer first and then just decided to do it. And sometimes that's what we just have to do. We just have to say, you know what? Okay, sometimes the heavens are a little bit silent. And guess what? We just keep going. We just make a decision. We just do that decision, right? <sighs> okay, so... Oh, I'm just getting that little like buzz. Okay, I'll I'll walk you through it. I just got a little ding and I'll tell you what it felt like. It felt like on the back of my neck. It felt like the most subtlest like feather tickle in the whole world. Okay, that my daughter's been making these tiny, she cuts these pieces of paper out and then she colors them. So tiny, but it just felt like the tiniest, like almost invisible, like the edge of a little feather right on the back of my neck. And it came with this accompanying, like little feeling of pulling up my own chart, like a, almost like a little, I'm not a very visual person. I don't really visualize very well, but the thought was I should pull up my own needle chart. So I'm going to pull up my own needle chart for you to show it to you really quick, but I have another thought. Just hang in there, guys. Uh, I Here's the deal. I never, ever want to waste your time. I I really think that your time is the single most valuable thing in the whole world. Honestly, everybody thinks that. You you need to like pat yourself on the back because literally everybody in the whole world thinks that you are the most important person in the whole world and your attention is the most important thing in the whole world. That's why they spend bazillions of dollars advertising to you. Because if you, all of your watch time is sacred and important and it is monetizable, people make money on what you pay attention to, including me, my own audience told me, I, I told them um, a couple of months ago, like I, I never monetized my videos after um, YouTube wouldn't let me opt out of in, in video ads. Cause I just hate that. I hate those myself and I hate subjecting my audience to that, but my, a lot of people were like, no, you should just turn on the ads, you know, just, just turn on the ads. So you can be a little bit compensated for all this work that you do. So I've, I've turned on my ads for a lot more stuff, but, but your attention is really important. So I don't want to waste your time. Let's take a quick look at my, at my own star chart. Cause that's what I, um, what I felt like I should do. So the thing that, that I would point out about my own chart 
is that I have a Pisces moon at zero, zero one degrees right here. Bing, bing, bing. So anything at zero, zero or zero one degrees is like extra potent of that degree. It's like getting it started. You know, it's the little kickstart of that degree. And so I was born on a lunar eclipse actually. And there is my sun at four degrees of Virgo. And here's my moon at one degree of Pisces. And that's just a really intuitive moon. But on top of that, I've got my North node in Pisces, which is your destiny. Okay. And I have my midheaven in Pisces. Like what the heck? Okay. So all of this of your, of your top five things on your chart, you have your sun, your moon, your rising sign. Then you have your um, North node and your midheaven. Okay. So out of those five, I have three in Pisces. Okay. And one of them is in cancer, which if you remember from Kate Middleton's chart, this is the sign that is ruled by the moon. And it is also very intuitive. So here we go. Four out of my top five are super intuitive placements. Okay. And, and I don't know, the reality is we all have different placements and we all have really different gifts. And so I feel like my gift is with intuition and divine listening and the first time I had somebody read my chart, I was 19 years old. My aunt ordered a star chart from him. He was a um, a bishop and like a um, high councilman and everything in church and an astrologer. And he had gone to church court over it multiple times, I think three different times because people would freak out because all of the stuff that he would find in people's charts, he would like, he would say it out and have it be exactly the same as their patriarchal blessings, if you're familiar with that. And parent, people would freak out and report him to higher up church authorities, but they all, every time he went in, they just said, you know what, we feel the spirit. We feel like God is saying that this is legit, you know? So anyway, my aunt, my aunt ordered a chart reading from him for me when I was 19. I thought it was, you know, okay. I mean, like I was cool with her doing it. I thought it was interesting, but I thought it was kind of BS um, for a lot of reasons, but one of the main reasons was that he looked at this chart and he said, this is the chart of a powerful psychic healer. And I'm like, what the crap? Like, ugh, I'm studying soil chemistry. What's wrong with you? You know, and which is such a like Virgo sun thing to say. And what he said was that my sun and my moon were as far apart on the chart as they could possibly get. And that I was going to always lean into my sun and ignore my moon. But my destiny that's this midheaven, midheaven right here and this north right here. My destiny was to be this healer. And that if I was going to unlock my destiny, I had to do what he called left brain. No, that's not right. Right brain push-ups. And I had to really sink into my intuitive side. So I just thought that um, that, that was so silly because he had predicted that I would get married um, eight months from that time, he was like, you're probably going to get married by the end of the year. I was like, I'd never do that. I'd have to marry that Duzet guy. <laughs> but then I did marry him. But by then I'd forgotten. It had been so many months. I did an internship at the EPA. I like came home. I took like 20 credits that final semester before I got married, like a crazy weirdo. Anyway, so um, so by the time it actually happened, I, this was like not even on my mind. But then years later, when, when I started actually like being able to, to see healing miracles just from like touching people... Um, the first time it happened, I was like, what the crap? I was like, an astrologer told me that this was going to happen to me. He told, he told me that I, that I was going to be like this healer. Oh my gosh. You know? And so I was like, totally floored, pulled up his reading for me, which I still have. And, um, you know, reread it. And I was like, oh my gosh, it's happening, you know? And I had to do my right brain pushups and really, really try to be more intuitive and, and all of that, oh man, this is the last thing that I was going to say. And then I'll wrap it up so you can get on with your day. Um, but that brought me to the creation of this book many years later. Magnetic Femininity is my most recent book. And it is really great in my own opinion. So you should definitely read it. But but I I felt like God was telling me I had to be more feminine. And I just didn't like that. I didn't like that for a lot of reasons because I really prided myself on my brain I thought you can't be smart and feminine. You can't be logical and feminine. And I really was very hung up on logic versus intuition because I just really felt like I was and am a very logical person. Like I'm a Virgo, come on. But, and, and I just couldn't see how intuition could be just as valid as logic. It just didn't make sense to me. 
And I would sit there. I mean, I just, I really judged, <clears throat> you know, the kind of people that like wear their swishy clothes and like wear 10,000 crystals on them. And like, you know, my whole wall is covered in crystals. I'm like wearing the seat of life on my hoodie, you know. But um, at the time I was like very judgy of those people. And I just thought those people are crazy. Like they they clearly can't have anything useful to offer the scientific world, you know. And I really viewed everything through this realm of science, even though I've also been like very religious and I'm like reading my scriptures and like getting answers to my prayers. But in my mind, getting answers to prayers was different than intuition. And anyway, God just told me, you got to step into your intuition. You got to do it. You got to do it. And I could feel, feel it. And when I say I could feel it, I felt it like right through here in this like chest region. And it would feel like this, like pulsing and be like, you got to do it. Got to, got to trust. You got to trust. And, and if I would, if I was still and just breathing and like, not thinking about anything else, then I could just feel it like you gotta, you gotta tune into your intuition. You gotta, you gotta let go of logic as the winning default setting of your life. And you have to let intuition take over. I was terrified. I cried about it for months. I, I mean, geez, I carried on. I wrote many journals full of my dramas, my internal, uh, you know, upsets over this perceived commandment from the Lord. And, uh, and then at the end of the day, you know, I, uh, on New Year's Eve that year, I told God, okay, fine, I'm done. I'm done fighting you. I'm going to trust intuition. And I just said, whatever comes into my mind from now on, God, I'm just going to believe it. So you can never let me think of anything wrong. And I said, I'm going to do anything that you say. And the crazier it is, the faster I'm going to do it. So never let me think of anything wrong. And I said that prayer and, uh, Five hours later, I woke up with a full vision of this other person's energy field, and I could see her, her like aura, all of her meridians. I could see that she had a, a big giant black spot in this one part of her body, and I knew how to fix it. I knew exactly where to touch on her body, that it would channel that flow of electrons. We call it chi. We're flowing electrons into that spot of her body to heal it. And I felt like God <laughs> said, you got to go. You got to go to her house right now. And I'm like, what what it's like i woke up at 4 30 and i was like you have to go to her house today and do this i'm like what and then at you know seven o'clock it's like you you need to go to her house right now and do this i'm like oh no <laughs> and i kept feeling it until at 10 o'clock in the morning god was just like you just literally promised me that the weirder something was the faster you would do it go to her house now or else and so i like called this lady up she, she hardly knew who i was and i was like hi, I have something for you. Can I come over? And she's like, yeah. <laughs> Surprise, the thing that I have for you is magic healing powers. So I'm just going to like touch your feet for a minute and like, you know, but it turns out she actually did have a problem and it did actually resolve. So it was like a very crazy moment. But after that day, all of my days were like that. And it has led me here to you. Here we are, my friends. So, so anyway, all of that is to say we're all on a different journey with our intuition. You know, I feel like I have a really unusual chart. Um, I, I, I don't know. I feel a little bit sad about it um, because I feel like I know several people have told me before that they're like jealous of my life and like jealous of the stuff that I do and everything. And I don't know. I just like feel sad about that because I feel like I have kind of like a bigger life than a lot of people, you know, I mean, God, I was born on a lunar eclipse. Like what the heck? Um, I've got Jupiter in Gemini, which is in detriment. That's actually a very unlucky placement, but I love it. And that's like how I can deal with so many messages all day long. Like you would not believe how many people I'm in contact with all day long, every single day. Um, but I can just do it. And I don't know, I've created a bigger life for myself, right? Like here, here we are on YouTube talking together about a bunch of crazy stuff, crazy, awesome stuff. But, but a lot of, a lot of people, I don't know. I, I mean, like for whatever reason, we're all on these different journeys. And like, this is the journey that kind of was my blueprint and kind of, I worked my butt off for it, you know, like, all these years that I have been been doing things like building this channel while my children were sleeping, you know, at two in the morning and, and just, you know, I've worked around the clock for a decade 
to build what I have, you know, but I also had the blueprint for what I have. And I just think we all have different blueprints, right? And we're all designed to be doing different things. And when I say that, you know, I think God designed us, but I think we helped. And I think that we chose our life journeys. And so I, it just, just kind of like breaks my heart a little bit when I hear of um, people who kind of wish that they were living my life. Um, I mean, which is fine. I, I like my life. Like, I can't blame you. I, I think it's pretty good. But, um, but don't you know that your life is so important? <laughs> that this stuff that you are here to do is just as important as mine and more important, you know? The stuff that all of us are here to do, nobody's more important than anybody else. You know, there's gonna be people with more likes than you on whatever platform and then people with more views. There's gonna be people that look more externally impressive. Right. But nobody can do what you do. And I know that it just sounds like so trite. Because from the time I was little, I always just felt like I, I had to have a big life. I just felt that from the time I was very young, I just knew that it was my destiny to have a big life, to impact many, many people. And that has been on my heart since I was very little. <sighs> And all the years, you know, right now, I, right now, you know, my following is much bigger than obviously it ever has been before. But but before it was, you know, let's talk about five years ago when I had 400 people on my email list. And, and I just would sit there and think, I'm here to, I'm here to influence the masses. I'm here to, to serve thousands. Like, how come only 400 people care about what I have to say, you know? I don't know if that is you right now. I just want you to know that I know what it feels like, you know, it's, it hasn't been that long ago for me and it's okay. We're all on our own journeys. And, but at that time, when, when I, you know, did not have the impact that I was hoping to have and the influence that I wanted to have, I would hear people say, oh, but your, your, your job is still important. You're so important. And I would just, I seriously you're gonna tell me that my life is important all I do is change diapers all day and be home and I like don't even leave my house and like this is like so important and honestly I would get really upset with it <laughs> and um so if you're there I just want you to know that I get it like I have been there and I've been like really mad about it I've sat there and said no I'm here for bigger stuff than this how can you tell me how can you tell me that you know, being sick with a chronic illness on my couch is so important. How dare you tell me that? I'm I'm meant to like go and, you know, influence millions. How can you tell me this? How can you tell me that spending my whole day cleaning up barf and diapers and, you know, little um, popcorn squished into the carpet? Um, how, how can you tell me that that's just as important as all these other people that are having these like big, obvious emissions? How dare you? And I would feel really angry about that. And I think that that's a valid thing to feel. Like if you feel that way, I think obviously you're allowed to feel that way and, and it's understandable. But, but, but it is true that you're really important. I always just think, I read somewhere that if if everything that Jesus went through on the cross, you know, all of the suffering that he went through in Gethsemane, if it was only for um, one person, he would have done it. You know, he he did it for everybody that ever lived, but if, he, if that was what had to be done just for you, he would have done it just for you. <laughs> because you're really important. Your attention is is everything, right? Everybody is vying for your attention all day long. Your children, the people, your friends, your parents, your coworkers, the people that want your money, the people that, that want your time. Everybody wants you. Everybody wants you. You're really important. All those years before I even had 400 followers on my email list, back when I had nothing, 
and nobody really cared about anything that I did or thought. I mean, but see, that wasn't even true. I, I had my family, but I spent so many years taking care of my brother who was disabled and dying, you know. And I would feel really resentful because I would think, I would just think how awful it was. I'm so smart. I've got so many talents and here I am just changing diapers on a grown man all day. I'm cleaning up blood and stomach acid all day. And I felt like I wasn't important. But I was important to him. And the things that you do that you think are not important. I mean, geez, I think like now I look at all the all that time that I spent resenting having to take care of my little children and viewing it as a waste of time and I just feel sick. How dare I think that? How dare I think that taking care of somebody else's human body needs is not important? That is the purpose of this life. The purpose of this life is to take care of physical bodies. The purpose of this life is to get a body and take care of it. So yeah, if all you do is change diapers and clean up blood off the floor, like guess what? You're freaking important. And guess what? If the only body that you take care of is your own, what is more important than that? What's more important than that? You're really important. Your body is important. And just being alive in it is important it really is and I know that I mean Gaul if you guys are where I was seven years ago ten years ago I know these words will fall on deaf ears and you'll say oh, Ellie shut up it's not true it's not important this isn't good enough I'm supposed to be doing more I'm supposed to be doing better and this isn't good enough and that's okay you can think that and I still love you and I still think that you are good enough and that you are really important so okay now I need to go ugly cry for a little while, so um, happy Easter tomorrow, and I love you guys. I will talk to you later. I hope this was helpful. Come hang out on Facebook, Intuitive Healing with Ally Duzette. <sighs> okay, thank you guys. Love you. Bye.